Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at finding the missing angle of a right triangle using the inverse trigonometric functions. So we have the problem in right triangle ABC shown below we have AB is equal to 13 and BC is equal to 7 and we need to find what is the measure of angle A to the nearest tenth of a degree. So for problems of this type the first thing you should do is label your diagram. So when you're given a diagram it's important to mark it up so that the problem jumps out at you more. That is, you'll have a better idea of what to do if you start drawing on the diagram. So we think about to find the measure of angle A, this is going to be our reference point. And we want to think about the side opposite of A, the side adjacent to A, and the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So we can start off with labeling the easiest piece of information. This side here, AB, is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And the way that we can identify this as the hypotenuse is we notice that it's opposite the right angle. So we know that this is our hypotenuse. And now next, if we're looking at angle A, notice that this side here, BC, would be opposite of angle A. And one way to get a visual of this is to draw an arrow through the angle and notice what side it points to. It points to side BC. So we know that this side is opposite angle A. So if we want to label it down here too, side BC is opposite angle A. And then finally we look at the last side, AC would be adjacent to angle A. Another word for adjacent is next to, so we note that side AC is our adjacent side. So now that we've labeled this diagram, we want to think about what two pieces of information do we know. And if we look at the diagram, we know the side opposite of angle A, and we know the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So when we hear the word opposite and hypotenuse, the word sine or the function sine should go off in our head because that one makes use of the opposite side and the hypotenuse of whichever right triangle you're talking about. So that allows us to set up, in general, we have the sine of some angle, in this case A, is equal to the ratio of the side opposite over the hypotenuse. So now for the next step all we need to do is we're going to substitute. We know that the opposite side has a length of 7 and we know that the hypotenuse has a length of 13. So now at this stage of the problem this is where the tricky part comes in. We note that we're trying to find the measure of angle A, but right now it's attached to the sine function. And we want to use this concept, this concept of inverse functions. That is, let's say for a second we had something like x plus 5 equals 7. This is pretty easy to solve, but you would note that the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. So to get x or the variable by itself, you would do the opposite of what's attached to it. So the opposite of adding 5 would be to subtract 5. And you have to do it to both sides to preserve that equal sign. And it would give you, in this case, that x equals 2. But for this problem here, we notice what is the opposite operation of taking the sine of some value? Well, the opposite of taking the sine of some value would be to take the sine inverse of some value. So if we take the sine inverse of sine a, it's going to give us, it's going to spit out a. But now it just has before when we subtracted 5 from both sides we have to do the same thing to both sides of this equation. So if we took the sine inverse of the left hand side we're going to take the sine inverse of the right hand side as well. So we're taking the sine inverse of 7 over 13. So if you punch this expression into a calculator sine inverse of 7 over 13 it should give you 32.57897039 and now just in case you're having trouble with the calculator usually the sine inverse function is underneath the sine function so you would hit something like second would be the first button you would hit and then you would hit sine of x Usually this is how it's laid out on most calculators, so instead of using sine, you would use sine inverse. You would hit second sine, unless your calculator had a sine inverse button. 
But anyway, once you evaluate sine inverse of 7 over 13, you get 32.57897039, and it goes on. But for this problem, what we want to find is we're going to round this to the nearest tenth of a degree. So one way, a, a fail-safe way of finding how to round to the nearest tenth, you could underline up to the tenths place. So we notice that it's we have a five in our tenths place, and we look one digit to the right. And if that digit is five or higher, we're going to round up. If it's four or lower, we're going to keep it the same. But in this case, notice that it's a seven, which is greater than five. So we're going to round this five up to a six. So we have 32.6. And remember, our unit for measuring this angle is degrees. So we have 32.6 degrees. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on finding the missing angle of a right triangle. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.